time away with Derek and Bev, um, staying there at Boston Spa doing the fishing and done those paintings on plein air. Um, but at the end of one of the evenings fishing um, we had a beautiful sunset, we had a couple of beautiful sunsets, one particular one, it was a poppies. It was in fact this one, uh, which I'll show you now on screen, and uh, absolutely lovely. And I thought, well I thought it would make a nice oil, I thought I would do a pastel with water again. Um, I know one of the viewers on YouTube said the other day she wasn't keen on the look of that because it was neither here nor there. But a lot of people have given uh, positive compliments. She felt that watercolour was better because it's more translucent and had its own beauty, which it does. This is not meant to be a watercolour, remember. This is water with pastel, not watercolour. Water with pastel is much more opaque. It's not transparent. It has a slight transparency to it. The idea of it for me is that it's fast. It was originally intended to be used with acrylic inks so that I could use the pastels over the top with a very liquid way, a very loose way, a very vibrant way. And her second comment was that it wasn't so vibrant as pastel, which I disagree with. Uh, I quite understand that it's not like watercolour, but it wasn't intended to be. Um, it's, it's intended to be with its own beauty and looseness. So what we do here is we build up the base colours with the water and pastel and those base colours become fixed when they're dry. So uh, once this paint has become dried it doesn't move when you put more pastel on top. It will take more coats, which is quite useful. We're using a hot press watercolour paper here. I could have used a texture for this one but I want to use a hot press. And I'm going to use um, a couple of different brushes here. We're going to use the, the oval mop again. And I'm going to also use this rake brush, which is rather nice, because the rake brush will hopefully give me the texture behind for the grasses and the stems of the poppies. So the wash brush will be there to blend in the uh, uh, underpainting to get the base colours for putting the other colours on top of. And we should get as vibrant a picture as with pastel paper, if not more so. Um, so it's silly to say that it doesn't give the same effects as a pastel on pastel paper. Of course it will do. With pastel, it's best to put the coats on first anyway and block and blend in the old traditional method. Asherton Stone, for instance, was a great artist with this. And uh, in that case, you block and blend in your colours underneath, but they become dull because they're blended. And then you put the lighter, fresh colours on top as a final. You always want to put your light, fresh colours on as a final and not touch them at all if possible. Don't even spray them. Uh, get a nice big double mount and, and make sure that it's always laid on this back. So in this case it's exactly the same really, instead of using pastel paper and just working over the top and blending, I'm using water and blending which fixes it and then I'm putting the final coats over the top um, with just fresh pastel and no brush at all. Although I'm going to use some brush textures in between just to show you the, the versatility of this method. So let's enjoy this and get this lovely evening soft half light as the sun goes down across these poppies near Boston Spa. Right, let's make a start on this work then. Now, you can put water on first and then the pastel, but it looks very dark immediately. It doesn't blend as well. I'm going to put the pastel on first, and for my base coat, I want a nice soft blue-grey. Um, so I'm going to add uh, this on for to work out where things are going to go first, but with the grey, in fact. Let's have a look now. It's just above halfway here, our trees. Um, 
with the horizon line, so the horizon line's about here. I want to get that on the same both sides. So one, two, three, a little bit. So there we go, one, two, three. That's going to be coming right across here. Almost, almost level. Just work out a very light composition of the drawing first, just so I know where my shapes are going. And again, about a third up, so about here. We've got the tree coming over. And about halfway here, the trees. Back. These distant ones there. Right, so I'm just going to go right the way across here first with my pastel sideways on. It doesn't use too much pastel this way. That, as I, say, as, I, as I was saying just now, I do want to finish up with my final coats uh, not being water at all or not being smudged at all. Just maybe a little blending and that's it. And that one. Now on top of that I want to lay some very light blue, some turquoise, some very light blue turquoise. Uh, it will blend in with that. I mean, I could, if I just smooth that in, look, you get the same. You can see you could almost do it with the pattern paper alone. This hot press, this hot press is actually more like a knot. It's got a very slight texture to it, and I would have preferred a smoother surface, but I think we're going to get by. Right now, take the water and blend it. Now, it goes very, very dark when you blend it at first. It seems far too dark, but it will dry a lot lighter, and you've got to take that into account. It will dry back to the original pastel colours. And so all I want to do at the moment is just get these these background tones in which I can work the lighter over the top or the darker over the top afterwards. I'm going to go right over the trees here because they're going to come through slightly. Get the water going. It dries very quickly especially in a, a warmer day which this isn't. Which it's a, you can hear with the rain behind me at the moment it's quite <laughs> a wet day to say the least. Um, and then blend that right up. You can see if you treat it just like a watercolour. I'm not saying <coughs> well, that lady mistook that this is a watercolour. It's a water and pastel technique. I just because I'm using it with water they think they take it as being anything like a watercolour. It's not it's got the same a lot of the same beauty in the fact you can make it very fluid and loose and you can use the the brush to make different effects. Right, so I'll just let that dry off and then I can work my pastel over that. Now coming down to these colours here, again we want to get some quite dark greys, warmer dark greys, and I'm going to mix um, two down here. I'm going to come in with a quite a warm grey, at, a green grey at first here. All the way down. You see, you see what happens when you go over the, the wet, it, it goes slightly stronger. I'm just letting that break through the surface here. And you can see what happens with the effects of the, the wet over the, the dry over the wet, like that. Right back into the distance here. I'm going to put some bluer colours over there later. This is just to get me started. Put the way through, down to here. I'm going to bring this darker colour right through in a minute with the brush. So there we are, that's nice and dark. And again, take my water and brush and just blend that. You don't need too much water on this one because it's uh, not a very big area. Don't worry about things spreading down like that because we're going to go over that with pastel afterwards. It's a very forgiving way of working. If you make a mistake, Go back and correct it very easily. It's a very fast way of working, which with an impatient person like me, which Derek will appreciate, um, is necessary. I get bored very easily. You know, it's very fast, which means I can capture this before the, ch the scene changes too much. Coming up into that tree there. I'm going to put some light back in. I'm going to cut back into this painting later. So don't worry about those trees not being absolutely correct. Won't matter.
just softly into the background there, just blending them back in. All the way along to the distance, we're going to put blues over there more later anyway. A bunch of trees here. So we can paint them in. I mean, I could quite happily paint in a, a line somewhere else because I've got, the, I've got it on my brush. It's just acting like watercolour. You're saying it's not watercolour. It's it's you know it's the same techniques in some ways. I'm not painting transparent paint then. So if I want to, I can come back into here and I can just start to mark in some of the other areas. Bring trees down. Draw over. It's just giving me more versatility. Right down to here, to the foreground, a bit more of the foreground. There we are. You get some nice effects. You see the watercolour granulation type effects we're getting there as well as it trickles down. It's quite fun. Next, then, whilst that's drying, I want another mid blue green. I want to start my yellow greens. I'm going to bring in um, a lovely mid mixture for mid yellow greens quite strong at first with this deep green all the way across so you could do it onto the wet paper but I don't advise that I think it's much safer to do it this way all the way across and we can mix our pigments together um, already so that when I put water on, these pigments are already giving me the sort of base colour that I want. So I want a mid-tone. I'm not putting my very lights on yet. I'm putting my, my mid-tones in. And my mid-greens. I'll just use that piece up. A little piece of pastel just fell on the floor then. If I keep these little bits of pastel, remember that you can just crush them down, mix them with a little water later, and make another pastel out of the paste by rolling them up into a, a final pastel. It'll just dry out and it'll give you a new pastel. Again I want to come over there with some more green so I'll take some mid green and come across that darker colour to give myself a nice mixture. It's going to dry light already you can see the sky is starting to dry lighter. So this is much more like a knot paper than a, a smooth hot press. That's what I was just experimenting with and I do feel that it's, I can start to even, even scumble in some greens into this now. Scumbling means just going over the surface lightly. Right, so get the water again and we'll blend that all the way across. I'm going to work Top downwards, that's normally with a watercolour. To give myself these lovely tones, let the paint just trickle downwards with gravity. Plenty of water. You see, we get a nice effect of it granulating down. Of course you've all got your own personal preferences. The lady that didn't like the earlier one and felt that pastel was better as he said as pastel can be done and watercolour better for itself. It's all personal taste. Um, I can't see the difference actually in using the pastel this way uh, onto watercolour paper and building up than on pastel paper. But if she can. Um, what worried me was the sort of innuendo that you know, um, that there's only one way to paint and do it well and that's rubbish uh, there are so many so many ways to paint now I'm going to take this paint off here this green and start to put some into the texturing here before I put cools back in there so you can see you're painting with the pastel I back all the way through blending it down We've got this evening scene where the colours are blending together more. There's quite a nice texture there you see of the of the paint coming down to give me this this trickle, this this, this uh, idea of the um, of the poppy stems. Let that dry off completely. And I'm going to start to come back in. Now whilst that's dry, I am doing an experiment here. So I'm trying around, playing around with this uh, 
rake brush and you can see I'm going to drag these colours now through already the rake with but I want to start to get the feeling of these tangled stems already I'm going to drag the rake this nice big rake all the way through here to start to get those, those tangled stems experimental I like to explore a lot I like to learn new things not only from other people but if I don't explore myself, where am, where am I going? So that's quite effective, isn't it? I quite like that idea. And we'll take that further later. So we'll let that dry right off now before I can work back in with the pastels over that. Well, you can hear the rain still pattering on the conservatory roof outside. It's nice to have a painting like this to work on when things are so abysmal, isn't it? Now let's start looking at um, how we can get this sky to be these lovely pinks and things that we're going to need. I'm going to start adding the pastel over the top just softly now, blending it in. So you see how that coat, which is dry now, is taking on new pastel so well. I'm going to just blend that down and in, just letting it show through there. Right down into here. I want this pastel coming right through, just with this grey, just glowing through here softly. And I want to blend that in. I really don't want too much of the texture showing through. This is why I wanted a hot press paper for this, rather than this in-between texturing, which I don't really require for this job. It would be nice for a snow scene, but I'm not impressed with this. It's meant to be a hot press. Plenty of pastel on there because I want to really blend these colours in softly together. I'm going to just feather in the texture over it. Just get a feeling of perspective here by bringing the pastel outwards. There we go. And into that now we want to gently bring our pinks start blending in these very gentle pinks put through it just scumbling over the surface very very lightly scumbling meaning just dragging the pastel across the top or a brush almost dry brush across the top and get this beautiful effect of the glowing pink now I don't see any difference in that than in using it, the same pastel on pastel paper Quite honestly I don't because we've got the colour glowing through. Remember that pastel papers are a bit dangerous in that the colour will lighten later. Um, they're prone to that, especially in strong sunlight. But these pastels shouldn't. We have done tests on them. In this case I'm not using the SAA ones, I'm using the Unison ones that I've got because I, I just found some of these much darker colours that they, the uh, SAA still haven't perfected yet. I'm going to now bring some of those little bits of pink just glowing through the cloud here and it comes down around the tree and you see because it's been fixed because the uh, the wet pastel is now fixed I'm able to just go in between these trees quite nicely bring them up much stronger pink just going across glowing through these bits here I'm going to go even lighter down there in a moment. So I'm going a bit more heavily across this bit because I want these pinks a little bit stronger. It's glowing through the trees. Lovely effect we can get. And it's so easy. It's so simple. It's so nice. A little bit brighter with my pink down here. A little bit warmer. Just, just dragging it through. It's coming across with the clouds and glow right through here a little bit stronger up there lovely soft effects just going back to that blue grey a little bit down to here bring it down to the trees a bit more just here now you can't tell me that you would know that wasn't on pastel paper um, again we can blend whenever we like, we can just soften things in a bit if we want to. I need to deepen the trees a bit now. I'm going to take a, a, a deep blue. 
just work that blue across this a little bit just to give the feeling of the trees being a little bit cooler. But these unisons, I think, are beautiful puzzles. I've always admired them. They used to sponsor me and uh, I took them all over the world with me. New Zealand and so on, using them and I've used them all over the place, this country and abroad. They're really value for money and uh, very, very strong colours. One of the finest pastels in the world. I think between these and the SAA I have all I need in the way of pastels. Now coming down to a much deeper blue still. Really quite dark and I'm going to actually mix a little bit of um, black with this in a moment. I don't usually use black but I just want to bring these colours down a bit more. And I can blend that. I want to soften and deaden it a bit. I'm working lights over darks and darks over lights, which is one thing, of course, we can do with with opaque paints, is we can work them either way, backs and forwards, and if we're not quite happy with what we've got, it means that we can improve it or change it. See the strength we can get by working up these from mid-tones to darks. Now, as I was saying, a little bit of black, a little bit of warmth, there we go, I'm just going to add a, this, this is actually an even deeper blue I'm putting on now, but a bit of the, the black as well into it, just to give that, the black has a certain, I don't use black much, but it has a bit more warmth in it. And look at that effect we can get now of space and distance. I'm just going to come back with my light blue a little and just bring some of these little bits of light back through the tree. Again, we can go backwards and forwards, putting these bits in settling down into here. So I've done my mid-tones and my darks, now I'm just going to start to bring in some of this lighter colour through the tree. And then we've got to go much lighter still to a cream down here. Next to these trees we've got some very, very light where the sun is just going down over the top. There'll be a bit more warmth of this in a moment as well. Quite large this there. But here we've got some streaks in the sky. How rapid this is. I mean I can do a, a pastel in about 10 minutes as I've shown you uh, on my films in Scotland for instance. Uh, about 10 minutes to do a a pastel of a sunset going down because we've got to work that quickly. Now I'm going to take a bit of deep purple here and on this little bit here where the sun is just going down through I'm going to bring some of this purple into the to show that the sun is behind there slightly through this tree here that can bring it forward slightly as well. Some beautiful colours aren't there. Press that a little bit harder. I'm getting quite a few layers of pastel on here now, but it's holding it. Coming back to that purple area, and I'm going to put a little bit of orange and red into there. That's where the sun is coming through here. Grass is behind. We're going to leave the flowers till the very end. Just want to drag across a little bit of warmth here and there. With the cools in the background, perhaps just a little of the lighter blue. I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine and just cool into here a fraction. Just to make this, some of these areas a little bit cooler here. Really make the colours glow. There we go, you see the difference that makes. Now a bit of turquoise, deep turquoise for our cools in the background. And I'm going to bring some of that just lightly through here, this misty effect. And a wee bit of, of pink just across that, not much, tiniest touch of pink just glowing across the field. Right, I'm going to start texturing now with the, um, in just a moment, a little bit darker on that deep green, where's my deep green gone? Just 
the blue and deep green there's a, a, a um, hedge just coming across here that I want to get back in and go back with my deep blue and just put a bit of that blue amongst it otherwise it's too warm right going to go on to the grasses now I want to work those up um, with darks and lights and I want to use my fan brush a lot more in a moment you can see I've already got some texture in there let's start to bring in some of these deeper greens first especially down here um, quite new techniques I'm experimenting all the time and trying something that it doesn't work, it doesn't work with pasta, we can always go over it again, so I'm not going to make a total mess because I know I can work over it. And if it does, it's only a sheet of paper, and if it does work, well I've learned something new, and I've got a good bit of work out of it. Right, let's see what happens now when I take some water on my fan brush, and I start to drag this colour through. You see how I can take these darks that are just put onto the surface now with the fan brush and drag them through. Now I couldn't do this just with pastel techniques alone. So this is something quite, quite new that we're experimenting with. I said fan one. So you can do it with a fan. Um, the fan will break up in the same sort of way, which is quite nice. And it's softening back as I, as I do this because as it dries it's not as dark as when I first do the texturing. Go much, much finer, just up into here, just tittling those colours up into there. So we're going misty into the background. We usually go from warm to cool in the background, but with a sunset or a sunrise that reverses, and we find it going you know, often from cool to warm because it's much warmer in the background. Now look at that effect. I don't know whether you like it or not, but I'm finding it quite fun. Right, I want to come back now with the lighter colours, so I'm back to my turquoises again. And I want to start building up the turquoises across here, little bit by little bit. And I'm going to use the rake brush over these to soften them in a moment. It's just well, a rain stop now, so I can get on a bit. and. Uh, work into this a bit more. Again I'm going to be using these turquoises just edge on very lightly at the moment just coming right off the paper here little strokes so that I can crisscross with these later and again as I said just now you see how fast this, this technique works it's a very very fast technique very rapid especially if you want to work out of doors on plein air again I'm going to just drag that across the surface like this because I'm going to use my rake brush in just a moment not, and that's rake not hake again uh, I've talked about using a fan on this and a hake would be useful um, but at the moment we're just using some rake and also I'm going to take a little bit of my slightly deeper green and just add some textures of that in here and there right and again come in with the water and we'll crisscross to break up these lines and drag them through a bit. And now I want to come in with some darker still, and very deep blues. So working from my mid-tones, darker and darker, and I'm suddenly going to shoot back into my lights in just a moment as well. So quite chunky at the moment because I'm going to drag this through with the brush. Texture them down. It'll be very hard to make them go like this without the water. They just won't smudge that easily. Again you see it's fairly well fixed because I want it fairly well fixed due to the fact that I'm going to use the reds over the top for the poppies soon. And then right down to my final darks on the dark side of things, on the dark side, sounds like Star Wars doesn't it, and into here in the foreground, and that makes the lights and the cools a lot lighter and cooler because of course these darks are warm and much darker, so it sends and receives everything back slightly. 
And again I want to come back with my rake over those, just drag through them. Look at the lovely texturing we're getting. Masses and masses, masses of texturing that way. And a little bit of the even lighter blue. And it's about time now to start doing the red poppies. Now for my poppies I'm going to use a deep cadmium red orange, a pink and two mauves. I'm going to start with the cadmium red and I can use my brush on that as well and just touching in all of these colours in the background work my way across from small to light in the background gradually get larger as they come forward just by dotting and dashing really isn't it just making the right shapes in the right places using the right colours relevant one to another I could use my water and brush and just blend some of these heads in a little bit more which I may just do to show you what I mean take a little bit of water on the brush and just paint into some of these poppies, the, the greens, bring them through a bit. doesn't kill, it just enhances. Right, next I want to be using the darker purple, especially amongst the reds themselves. Almost wherever there's a red there's going to be a bit of the purple amongst it. And then to my lighter purple, back here, I'm going to just blend a little bit of that in to the distance here. I can use the edge of the pastel again to put some more stems in. Very corner cutting edge. Come back to my light green blues and um, I've got the poppies in, just go across a few of them with the stems. And while I'm at it, we'll take a very light green, a much warmer green, and let's re really brighten things up in places now by putting a bit of the orange in. That's catching the lights up here. Right, back to my rake brush again. We'll just Come through some of these slightly lighter pigs still in places. Start to feel some of these edges of petals a little bit more. Do you know I think we're nearly there? I'm just putting more deeper blue in here to link with that bunch of trees in the middle. Again, I'm going to use a bit of the colour from the sky and put a, a blue-grey in here to some of these spots on the uh, stems. Just a bit. I'm just going to put a little bit more warmer green just from one or two places. And I'd say we're about done. Signature. Put a bit more of that in here against these blues. Against these reds. I'm talking about blues. Just blobs, dots and dashes really, isn't it? Right, we stretched this paper earlier. Now it's a matter of taking it off to mount it. So I'll just take my knife, find where the edges, and go that way around. You can stretch pastel paper, you know, um, if you wanted to get a lovely smooth tight surface. I've never actually needed to, but it is possible. Lift this off, there we go. Put 
the amount, and the amount is up. I pre-cut most of my mount so that I can come straight on. I don't want a, a very light mount with this, but a nice medium tone. I'm going to lose a little bit of the sky, I can see there. Decide how much you want to lose of the sky and how much you want to lose of the poppies, but I think you can afford to lose a little bit more of the poppies. Somewhere about there should do it nicely. Then I'm going to use sellotape to stick it onto the back. Most important thing at the moment is to keep the mount clean, so clean fingers and using a broad tape all the way along like that. And place that next to your painting, and your thumb off it, and just place the painting half over it like that. Stick it onto that. Now, make sure you've got clean hands again, come back. I haven't fixed it, don't like fixing pastels because it makes them duller. You've got your corners marked, so we can drop it onto those corners and press with a clean hand along those edges. I think it's going to stay there then, turn it over, it shouldn't touch the table and make a mess. And you can then do the rest of the taping. Turn it the other way up again. And we're going to now put some cellophane on. Nice big roll of cellophane, take away the painting. And roll out the cellophane. Make sure you've got enough to go around the painting. So a bit more than I expect to have there. Lay the painting upside down on that, like so. Hold around for your excess. like so, and bring over this part that just overlaps with some scissors, turn it off, there we go. Now we need to have enough sellotape bits cut, so take this together, make sure it's nice and tight there. Do this joint, I don't want that loose in there, but that's nice and straight, no kinks. Let's see if we can get some nice hospital bed corners. And you can use smaller tape if you want for this part. Cut the corners under. Right, cellophane's on, so we've got a lovely picture, protected. Well, there we are, our finished painting in pastels, using water and pastel. So, nice and vibrant, far more texture than you can normally get with just an ordinary pastel itself. And you wouldn't know it wasn't standard pastel technique, I don't think, except that it goes a stage further. And I've shown you how to mount it as well. So there we are, a matter of an hour or two, way I'd work out of doors in the same way, nice and loose. Hope you enjoyed this. And I hope it helps you to make some lovely pastels as well.